afternoon friends welcome to words of encouragement with your friend and brother Ved Nukai last time we spoke which was on Monday I asked the question what can the Word of God do for you and there is much so much that the Word can do for you and for me and in the entire race of humanity or human race. This evening I want to talk to you about you must receive the Word of God if it is going to work for you. In First Thessalonians, Paul is writing to, all, to believers who had responded to the gospel in a wonderful way. The church at Thessalonica, they had received the word of God. And this is what he said to them in the 13th verse, I'm quoting the New King James Version. He says, for this cause, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, when you received you have to receive the word of God. When you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. What the Bible will do in us, in you and in me, depends partly on how we receive the Word of God. When we receive the Word of God, we have access to something that is truly remarkable. Amen. When we receive the Word of God, when we hear the Word of God, either via this medium or another preacher or even you receive it by, re by reading the Word of God for my brethren at the Aruka Worship Center. However you receive it, when you receive it, you receive something that is amazing. It is truly remarkable. Listen to what Peter says in, in, this, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. He says, His divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. When you receive the word of God, you will understand that. If you didn't receive the word of God, you cannot understand. Let me read it again. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who has called us by, divine, by glory and virtue, by which we have been given, by which have been given rather, to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Amen. I want you to notice that these Two sentences really is one single statement. And it is, my dear friend, an amazing statement. Hallelujah. It is an amazing statement. It tells us that God's divine, omnipotent power has already um, given us everything that we are ever going to need. Think about it. My dear friend, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, all that he could have provided for mankind, he, he provided then through that 
deaths and burial and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so all that God can do for us, He has already done it. All that He can provide, He has already provided it. Amen. And that is what the Bible tells us, what Peter tells us here, that His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life, all things that pertain to life, all things that belong to life. What belong to life? Health, He has given us. What? Finances, He has given to us. Hallelujah. Peace, He has given to us. Amen. Salvation, full and free, He has given all things. Amen. He did not hold back anything. He held back nothing. He gave all things to us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And I repeat that all of God's divine omnipotent power is already given to us, has already been provided all that you will ever need. Hallelujah. Now, the New Age philosophy essentially teaches us that you can become a God. And that is an age-old thing. It, is, it really has um, evolved, it has really come back over and over, over the, over the years. And today it has come in different forms and through different teachers and systems and methods and so on. But it is the same old thing. If you go back to Genesis, you will see, amen, where, where it was said, you shall be gods, you will be like God. Hallelujah. Amen. And, but for the sake of the time that we are living in, I'm saying that the New Age philosophy promises us that we can become a God. But I want you to know that that is absolutely false. Clearly and obviously, that is a false teaching. And it is false if only for one basic reason. God is uncreated. We, on the other hand, are created. And the created can never become uncreated. So that's a deception. Let me repeat that. We can never become God because God is eternal and God is uncreated. Hallelujah. We mortal men, regardless of where we are from, regardless of whether we are high or mighty, whether we are full of money or not, whether we are full of this world's goods, whether we have popularity or whether we are a vagrant or a homeless person, hallelujah, we are all created. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. We are all created and the created can never become uncreated. Hallelujah. However, we can become partakers of the divine nature of God. Amen. And that is stunning. I mean, that is, that is marvelous to think about it. Amen. That we can become, as, as the Bible says, we can all become partakers of the nature of God. And how can, we, how can that happen to us? When we receive the word of God and apply the promises, amen, that is contained in the word of God. Amen. So the word of God is powerful. It is quick. It can cause us to become partakers of the divine nature of God. We can have the life, the Zoe kind of life, the life the nature of God on the inside. We can become partakers of that. Partakers of the nature of God. Amen. But we have to receive and apply the promises of Almighty God. And this, my dear friend, is the 
key to our success. Amen. It is the most precious gift that God has given unto us. So to recap quickly, let me read again the opening scripture. It says, for this reason we thank God without, we thank God without ceasing because when you receive the word of God, you have to receive the word of God. Receive it in, in your hearing and receive it in your heart. After you have received the word of God, which you heard from us, Amen. You welcome it not as the word of men. Amen. Because the word of God is not the word of man. But it is the truth. It is the word of God. Amen. And which is able to effectively work in you and me. Hallelujah. Who believe. And Peter says in Second Peter 3 verses 4, 3 and 4. He says his divine God's divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And through the knowledge of him who called, called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises that through these you may be the partakers or partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Hallelujah. Are you a partaker of the divine nature? Amen. You can become a partaker of that divine nature. I invite you to do so, my dear friend. God bless you. Let us pray. Almighty God, I give you thanks for your word again. I thank you, O oh God, that all that you could have provided for us, you did through the death, burial, and resurrection of your son Jesus Christ on the cross. Uh, hallelujah. And today, Lord, we open up our hearts and our lives and we receive Jesus, uh, who is the personal word of God. Uh, and we also give ourselves, uh, O oh God, to the written word of God, this holy scriptures, uh, hallelujah, which is the Bible. Bible, so that, oh God, as we receive it, we will receive and we will come to know, oh God, that all, hallelujah, provisions for life and godliness, you have already made it, oh God, and we are to receive it. And so we will receive the word every time we read it, we will receive it. Every time we hear it, we will receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. And may the word dwell richly in us so that it will abide in us, hallelujah, and build us. And we will grow from strength to strength in the powerful name of the living Christ Jesus. Amen and Amen.